please join me in welcoming Vivek to the stage. Look at the title of my talk. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. First of all, we're in Silicon Valley. You commonly hear this uh, phrase over here, that we wanted flying cars, instead we got 140 characters. Indeed, uh, I mean, most of you are still young, but there are some, people, some oldies like me over here. When we were young, we used to dream about uh, flying cars. We used to dream about tricorders, replicators, Rosie the robot, and, and so on and so on. And what did we get? Clogged highways, crumbling bridges, 50-year-old 747s, you know, internet which is slower here in Silicon Valley than it is in most other parts of the world. <laughs> And indeed, um, you know, with justification, some people in Silicon Valley argue that it seems that we run out of innova innovation that, and that uh, ideas are dead, or we run out of ideas and innovation is dead. You hear different permutations of the same story over and over again. And then uh, you have uh, the uh, most powerful venture capitalists in the Valley funding mobile and social media. Indeed, they argue that that's the last hurrah. Now, the same people also argue that kids should drop out of school, education is not important. <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> now, this is relevant for this conversation session because the same people who are you know, espousing these beliefs also argue about funding the, the young boys who drop out of Stanford. The vision is that these kids know social media because they were brought up on it. This generation understands the internet better, they understand Trends better than understand social media together, blah, 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 blah. The every excuse in the world for why they, why they fund these young white males. Right? That's where the money goes. That's where the excitement is. Because it all ties into this common belief that that's it, there's nothing else happening in the world. We better fund it, otherwise uh, we're not going to make any money and the world is going to fall apart. Right? That's a common uh, media belief here. But let, let's start uh, questioning that. Let's start with the good old telephone. We've seen it advance, right? <laughs> but did you know it's also now a medical device? This, we, we don't seem to realize how far uh, telephony has progressed. Yes, it's an encyclopedia of medical knowledge. We have access to more knowledge than uh, the most uh, educated physicians did a decade ago. We have access to all the latest journals, all the latest breakthroughs, all the latest papers. Amazing uh, you know, knowledge we have access to. No one disputes that. No, no surprise over here. But did you know that your phone could also act like a glucose meter? It's also a cardiologist. In fact, I have one of these devices on my iPhone. You touch the two leads and it does an EKG. I'm a heart patient. This is why I became an academic, and this is why I go around uh, giving these talks. Um, but when I go to the cardiologist, it's really painful getting those probes put all over you. They rip your hair off. I mean, it's really horrible, OK? Now, with this little device, I touch the two leads on it, a live course device, and it does an EKG on the spot. It emails my EKG to my cardiologist. So it's just amazing how far technology has uh, progressed. That's nothing. There are a whole range of devices called the quantified self. It's a, it's a, gen a generic set of devices in many, many, many different areas which can monitor your health and help you prevent disease. Just amazing advances happening over there. And then there's a the human genome. About a decade ago, the genome was first sequenced. It cost a couple of billion dollars to uh, get there, decades of work. Today, you can get a full human genome sequence for about $3,000. Within a few months, you're talking about $1,000. If I came, give this talk about three or four years from now, I'd be talking about my iPhone case that does a complete human genome. Okay. Why is this important? Because we've become software. Imagine being able to build applications now which map your DNA to your lifestyle habits, to what you eat, to the diseases you have, to the medications you take. And imagine how much uh, you can gain from that. Until recently, we didn't have the, uh, the millions and millions of genomes. Over the next two or three years, we'll have hundreds of millions of genomes sequenced. Imagine the type of applications you can start creating which solve the problems of health. The way medicines are, uh, the way the FDA works is that if there's an adver adverse reaction from medic medicines from more than a tiny percent of the population, the, the drug is banned. It could be that the, G the DNA of the person 
uh, you know, was different than, than that of others. So you might be able to now prescribe personalized medications. It's all possible through software. This decade, we're going to have an amazing set of advances. Down here in Berkeley, we have exobionics developing exoskeletons, a $6 million man, the bionic woman, if you recall from those days. Dean came and developed the Luke arm. You have mind-machine interfaces. You have uh, intuitive surgical developing robotic surgery devices, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you remember IBM Watson that defeated uh, human beings at Jeopardy, well, guess what? Uh, um, Watson is going to medical school. I don't have the slide here, but Watson is now learning uh, medicine. I talked about emailing my uh, EKG to my cardiologist. I love my cardiologist, but I know he drinks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather trust IBM Watson to diagnose my, uh, my health than my cardiologist. It's the same thing with a physician. I, I mean, I'd rather have a computer that, that monitors my stools, that monitors my health, that um, uh, monitors everything I do, tell me when I'm doing something wrong, or tell me when I'm about to get a disease, than my doctor who I see every couple of months if I'm lucky, and who makes me wait for two hours uh, in the waiting queues. I mean, technology can do a much better job than all that. All possible today. Now, how did it happen? How did we go from uh, doom and gloom to my talking about saving the world? It's about exponential technologies. If you look at the history of technology, it took thousands of years to go from simple things like uh, agriculture to pottery to the plow and so on and so on. Then bang, in the last 200 years, you've had amazing advance after amazing advance after amazing advance. This is called exponential growth. The technologies that are advanced, uh, information technologies are advancing exponentially. And uh, you know, this is really when you start seeing the magic happen. When you, when you combine two exponential technologies, you get the potential to create a billion dollar business, a trillion dollar business in the future. You know, take uh, 3D printing. Have you ever seen a 3D printer? It's just amazing technology. It's, it's indeed, give it three or four or five years, and we're talking about the Star Trek replicator that we used to dream about. Okay. You can print plastic, glass, uh, titanium, even human cells using 3D printing today. And this technology is, in, in its, we're talking about version 0.1 right now. Wait till we have version 3.0 of 3D printing. These are all printed using 3D printing. There's no co cost to complexity. It's like when you uh, print on a laser printer. You don't think about the complexity of what you're writing. You just, you just hit the button and it prints. It's the same thing with 3D printing. And then artificial intelligence. We got pessimistic about AI because there was so much hype about it in the 80s and then nothing happened. AI is far from dead. AI is everywhere. You see it in air traffic control systems. You see it in Siri. You see it in the games that you play and so on and so on and so on. Uh, here's the, the IBM Watson slide. And now, AI, uh, you know, the, the, the most sophisticated AI tool of all, IBM Watson is going to medical school. Wait till you see the major advances coming out of um, Watson and the ability to prescribe medicines uh, based on AI. Robotics. Why don't we have Rosie? Because the complexity required to build a sophisticated robot that can understand, that can observe what's happening around it, and that can communicate and look at your emotions and talk to you would have, been, uh, would have required a computer the size of this room. Now I have a more uh, you know, powerful computer sitting in my pocket all day waiting for me to check emails than existed the day I was born. The iPhone has more computing power than existed on the planet the day I was born. It just sits idle waiting for me. That's how much computing has progressed. So therefore, you can embed these little, little chips in these uh, devices that move and create very sophisticated robots. Indeed, this is going to impact manufacturing like nothing you've seen before. I've written articles about how manufacturing is dead, uh, how China is toast, and so on, because you have amazing advances happening in robotics. Who's building robots? Kids. And then synthetic biology. We can also write DNA now. Look at these advances that are possible with synthetic biology. Who's doing it? Students. And then you have the education revolution. Tablets becoming pervasive. Indeed, the potential is for all of us now to uh, change the world. The bottom line is that these are opportunities that are open to you. You know, let the kids over here and the venture capitalists build their stupid uh, social media apps. <laughs> all of you are smart enough, capable enough, and have the resources to save the world. I'm talking about technologies that solve the grand challenges of humanity. 
that make the world a better place, that build you know, $100 billion businesses. I'm not talking about Mickey Mouse little uh, Instagrams, which you know, Zuckerberg happens to buy over, to overpay for. I'm talking about <laughs> saving our health, saving the environment, taking people out of poverty, and doing good for the world. This is something that women are a lot more attuned to than these guys who want to go and strike it rich. They want to do good for the world. They, they have uh, feelings, uh, you know, they, they really care about society, about humanity, um, and, and who really want to make an impact. Well, what I'm telling you is that you can save the world and build enormous wealth too. And the cost of building these technologies is very, very low. The cost of building these sensor-based devices is now in the tens of thousands of dollars, not millions of dollars. All of you have the ability and the capability, and you can make it happen now. That's the message I want to leave you with. Thank you.